Hello friends, welcome to another video on WSO2's tutorial series. Today, we are going to discuss message store and message processor. Let's see what it is and what are the advantages it provides. So throughout this tutorial series, we have been discussing the synchronous style of communication, wherein the client will send a request to the server and server response, and until the response from the server is received, the client waits for it. But what if we don't need a synchronous style of communication? There could be multiple reasons for it. Maybe the service provider cannot process the messages at the same pace as requested by the client, right? So we need some kind of throttling in place so that the service provider can process messages at its own capacity. And one other reason could be the system that sends the message is not bothered about how the target system behaves after receiving that message. For that system, they just need to deliver the message. In these kind of scenarios, an asynchronous style of communication is much preferred. So message store and message processor helps us in achieving an asynchronous style of communication. Now in this integration scenario, you can see that there's a source system sending a message to an integration layer, and then it's supposed to go to the target. But as you can see here, there is a message store and a message processor. So what it actually does is, it receives the request from the source system, writes the message into a temporary store, that's a message store, or you can call it as a queue as well, and then acknowledges the receipt of the message back to the source system so that this, the session with the source is closed. Now, the target system can process these messages at its own pace. The message processor actually helps in reading these messages from the message store and then forwards it back to the target system. So in short, a message store is something that helps us to store the messages temporarily and a message processor is something that helps in reading the message from the store and processing it further. To demonstrate it, I'll create a sample API and then I'll show you it in action. I'm at the management console now. Before you actually go to the integration studio and define the API, we have to define the message store and processor. So I prefer to do it or rather define the message store and processor from the management console. We can create a message store and processor by clicking on the corresponding links. I'm clicking on message store first. If you click on the add message store option, you can find a number of message stores, right? So the first one is the in-memory message store. This is exactly what we are going to use here. In this case, the messages are stored in memory. We don't need an external uh, messaging software in this case. It is taken care by WSO2 internally by saving the messages in memory. But the disadvantage is, if you come across a system shutdown or a restart, if you have messages in the queue, that'll be flush. You lose the message, which means in case of in-memory message stores, you don't have something like a persistent store. Then you have a number of other options. Uh, you can find RabbitMQ, which is an external messaging solution. And similarly, you have a custom message store uh, in which, uh, which can be utilized for uh, implementing a message store as you need. So for this particular video, I'm going to make use of in-memory message store. That's the first option. So I'm clicking on add in-memory message store. And then here I have to give a name for in-memory message store. So I'm going to give sample message store. I'm just saving it. Yeah, so that's it. It's as simple as that. So we are going to say write messages to sample message store. You can relate it to a queue. Now I'm going to define as a message processor. I'm clicking on the message processor tab. Just as in the previous tab, you can see the available message processors here, which means these are the ones I have already defined. And to add a new one, click on the add message processor tab. Here you have multiple options. Um, the first one is add scheduled message and forwarding processor. So this is something like that helps us read message from a queue or a message store and then forward to an endpoint. And similarly, you have another one, the second one, uh, this helps us to move the message from one message store to another one. But for this particular video, I'm gonna make use of a message sampling processor. This is a very basic one. So what it does is it reads a message from a message store and then it forwards it to a sequence. In that sequence, you can have your logic to perform whatever actions you need on that uh, particular message. So I'm clicking on add message sampling processor. So I'm gonna give a name sample message processor. 
and then I have to define a sequence here um, to define what exactly to be done once the message is read from the queue or rather the message store. So for now I'm going to give the name sample sequence. I haven't defined it yet but I'll have to do that. Yep. The next one is message store. So here I have to select from which message store I have to read the message. Right. So I'm going to select sample message store. Now you can point multiple message processors to a single message store. Similarly, you can use the same message store in multiple APIs so that multiple APIs can write message to the same message store. Now you have another tab here uh, with a few additional parameters. So let me explain that. So this indicates a processor state. Basically, this allows you to activate or deactivate your message processor. By default, this is, a, this is activated. A sampling message in interval indicates a polling interval. By default, it is 1000 milliseconds, which is one second. If you want a shorter uh, polling, uh, you can configure the value accordingly. Sampling concurrency indicates the number of instances reading messages from um, a particular message store. Default value is one. There will be only one instance reading message from the queue. If you want more um, for a high throughput, you can configure a higher value. So this, this is actually defined based on the number and the volume of messages being written to the message store and how fast you need to process them. Yeah. So for this demo purpose, these values are enough and I'm going ahead and saving the message processor, clicking on save. Now the configurations on the management console is completed. Let's go back to the integration studio to define an API that writes message to our message store. I'm on the integration studio now. I'm making use of the same sample seven um, application maven multi-module project that i created in the last video so i'll just add an additional api here so to add an api i'm clicking on the api tab click on new and clicking on rest api i'm selecting the sample options click on next I'm going to give the api name as message store api and let me use the same in the context as well so message to api I'm finishing the API by clicking on the finish button. So this is the basic structure of the API. So I'm going to uh, make it very simple. Once I get the message, I'm just uh, using a log mediator to log, indicating that um, I've received the message inside the in sequence. And then I'll have a message to, and then I'll have another log instance, right? So I'm going to use a log mediator first, and then I'm configuring it. I'm going to use the custom uh, log level clicking on add new element and uh, I'm going to name it as log point message received that's just a log entry I'm going to finish it next step is to select the store mediator I'm dragging the store mediator here and then configuring it clicking on the properties tab here you can specify the the value of message store um, there are two options available. One is a value where you can actually hard code the value and second one is expression. If you want to extract the value from an incoming request or something of that sort, then you can go for the expression. In our case, we have already defined the message store. So I'm directly getting the value. I'm going to directly use the value of the message store here. The next option is to select the available message stores. So I'm going to select the available message store option. And then I need to copy the value of message store. Sample MS was the name of the message store that I defined in the management console. So I'm going to name it as sample MS. In case if you have a set of actions to perform once a message is stored into the message store, you can define a sequence here. Uh, in this particular scenario, I'm not going to use a sequence. So I'm going to leave it blank. Now next step is I'll just add one more log to indicate that uh, we have actually written a message to the store. I'm selecting the log level as custom and then just making a log entry. So this is going to be, um, I'm just naming it as log point and then message posted to the queue. And now since uh, this is an API, I, I'm just adding a response mediator to just close that session. So this part is completed. Now we have one more step left uh, before we uh, deploy the API. That is to define a sequence. Once the message is read by the message processor. Now I'll define a sequence to actually read that message and make a log entry, right? 
So I'm clicking on the sequence here. Go to new and then define a sequence. Click on next. Sample sequence was the name of the sequence that we gave in our message processor configuration. So I'm going to use the same name sample sequence and click on finish. Now here we can define what needs to be done after we read the message from the queue. So I'm just going to make a log entry and then drop the message. So I'm using a log mediator and then using a custom option. I'm clicking on add new element. I'm going to use request message as a property name. And then here I'll be using expression because I want to print the whole body of the message. So I'll use expression and then I'll just give dollar body. Click on save and then finish. So after I read the message and make the log entry, I'll just drop the message. So drop mediator is actually meant for that. It just terminates the flow. So I'm just dragging a drop uh, mediator. There's no configurations required for drop mediator. Just saving the sample sequence and we are good to go. Before I deploy the API, I have to make a minor modification. Since uh, this one being uh, an interface where I have to post some data, I'll change the method of the API from get to post. Um, by default, it is get, so I'm changing it to post. Once I send, it's, it's completed and it's ready to deploy. I'm opening the POM file of uh, the car file. I'm adding the new artifacts to uh, the car file. So message to API and the sample sequence uh, were the two new artifacts that I've added to this project. So I've just selected uh, everything and just saved the car file. Now it's ready to deploy. I'm right clicking on sample seven car and then just redeploying. As you can see in the message here, the car file is successfully deployed. Now, before I actually send the message to this API, I'll first stop the message processor so that I can show you uh, the message by reading the message to. So I'm switching back to the admin console and then clicking on the deactivate button against a sample message processor. Yeah, now it is deactivated so that we will be writing messages to the message store but won't be processing it. I'm going to postman to post a message to show you this. So this is the API, message to API. And this is the message that I'm going to post. So I'll post uh, maybe two messages. The first one was uh, message one and the second message is message two. Let's see the message store to see whether uh, it has actually persisted there or returned to there. I'm on the admin console now. I'm clicking on the message stores. See, in sample message, you can see two messages. If you want to view the message, you can click on sample message on, on the and the name of the message store and you can see the messages here each message has a message id assigned to it automatically and if you want to view the message you can click on the show envelope button and then you can view the message so once that is done i'm going to start the message processor click on the activate button against uh, the sample message processor click on activate click on yes now it is activated now we must see the log entry saying that this, the messages are processed. I'm switching back to the integration studio. Now, if you look at the log entries, I'm making it uh, full screen. See, there are two log entries, message received and message posted to store. And these are the entries from our message store, right? And then after we started the message processor, you can see the log entry here successfully reactivated the message processor. Now you can see both the messages here request message, JSON object, message one and message two. So that was a quick demonstration of how to use message store and message processor in WSO2's enterprise integrator. I hope you have enjoyed the video and understood the basic configurations of message store and message processor. I thank you uh, for watching this video. Do let me know your comments and uh, feedback. I would appreciate that. Happy learning and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye-bye.